So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kathy Tate. I'm the general manager with the Southern Georgian Bay Chamber of Commerce. Very excited to be here today um, with our very first town hall. And we're honored to have special guests in the house, uh, our mayors of North Simcoe. Just a, a note, unfortunately, Mayor LaRue couldn't join us um, due to a, a bit of a um, uh, emergency uh, at his home today. So hope all is well there. But we do have on the line, of course, our um, other three mayors. So Mayor Stuart Strathern from the town of Midland. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got Mayor Ted Walker from the township of Tay. Thank you again. And uh, last but not least, Mayor George Cornell from the township of Tiny. Thank you, Mayor Cornell for joining us. So with our businesses going through such a, a challenging time, incredibly challenging time over the past year, uh, we thought it would be a great time to bring our, our mayors together and our communities, um, hopefully to move forward with some positive thoughts and uh, a renewed outlook. So uh, 2021, we're hoping is going to be much better than uh, the year previous for our businesses. And we're trying to stay very positive. Uh, so for the format today, we will look forward to hearing a short presentation uh, from each of the mayors on their top five wish list uh, for the year ahead, if you will. And following that, we do have some pre-submitted questions from our members and the community. And uh, the these questions, sorry, will go out to, uh, to all of the mayors if they'd like to answer. So without further ado, uh, we'll move forward with our, our presentations and um, look forward to hearing from the mayor. So perhaps I can ask you, Mayor Strathern, to begin um, with the presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to participate in uh, this sort of town hall forum. Um, Midland uh, Town Council at the beginning of its term in 20, uh, early 2019 held a strategic planning exercise uh, and then followed up a year later. And in that exercise, we identified um, three areas, that, uh, three pillars, if you like. First being accountable, responsive and innovative governance. Second being economic and community development. And the third being safe, sustainable and healthy community. And each of these are, center, sort of are interwoven with each other. And there are some subtasks that fall down from these these headings. Today, I'd like to talk about five, uh, five areas where I believe council will be focusing and staff will be focusing their efforts in 2021. Of course, COVID recovery is top of mind. Um, it's been a long, hard, tough slog. People in, in North Simcoe have been very, uh, I think, uh, need to be congratulated on their diligence, keeping numbers low. Uh, the uh, staff at GBGH uh, and their recovery from uh, the outbreak, uh, remarkable. Same with the uh, uh, seniors' homes run by the county. Uh, hats off to uh, Jane Sinclair, who's the general manager of county and her staff for their uh, work. But a special thanks to uh, people in the community who've, who've exerted themselves, uh, you know, follow the protocols from the uh, health unit. Um, as part of that recovery, uh, one of the big things, of course, last year, the big event was the uh, re, uh, reconstruction of uh, the, our reimagining, if you like, of the downtown. Uh, it was completed, the substantial construction completed in November on time and on budget, uh, which was, uh, to me, a remarkable testament, again, to staff and to the contractors, uh, given the COVID outbreak and all the impediments that were in the way. Uh, this year, we'd like to finish the downtown uh, by putting finishing the planters. And of course, the big thing is to get people into the downtown. That'll be the finishing touch on, on the main street and uh, people wandering about. It was designed to be pe uh, people and pedestrian friendly and a place for uh, friends to visit, to support the local merchants. Uh, we'll be holding special events and uh, supporting downtown businesses through special events and uh, other activities. I like to think of the downtown as, as a, a link between the harbor and the waterfront and the other special feature of Midland, which is the Lake Park. So there's this continuum of things to do, people to visit, places to stop and, and meet with your neighbors. Um, so it's, as I say, it's a link between Midland Bay development, uh, the harbor and the lake. 
speaking of Middle Bay development, that's top of mind for a lot of people. And also for us, uh, the, it's a brownfield site, used to be the old Uniman site, about 40 acres. Uh, we've done a master plan for the site, uh, embedded that master plan in the um, official plan, uh, all based on comprehensive public consultation. Um, the design and creation of an interim site will be one of the activities this year we've allocated. The, so what we've done is created a, a, a municipal services corporation, populated it with a board of experts who actually been there, done that, burnt the shirt. They know what they're doing. Uh, we re council receives a, um, a work plan from them, approves it along with the budget, and then they can do the work and report back at the end of the year. So this year in the plan, they're going to uh, create an interim site which will allow residents to come down to the waterfront and to uh, see poster boards and get a sense of what it would feel like to be walking along a 3,500 foot uh, public promenade along the entire waterfront. Um, we're also looking at uh, criteria for selection of and uh, beginning a search for development partners. We've had people express interest. We want to follow through with that create that matrix that says these are what the attributes we're looking for in a development partner. Uh, we'll then take that out to uh, once we've take, we'll take it out to the public uh, for continued consultation. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing this year also is to I think to is to create uh, an interim docking area for cruise ships for 2022, which Carlton has expressed interest in Midland as a terminus. Um, so we'll need to, we're looking at the coal dock at the east end the old coal dock at the east end of the Midland Bay Landing site as an interim uh, place to uh, dock these ships, 640, 640 foot long cruise line. About the size of the Bay Commodore that's currently in harbor. We're also looking at, uh, uh, we actually have led a contract to investigate uh, creating a NESCO geopark for this area. So they'll be looking at how big should that area be, uh, what are the features that would allow us to successfully bid for and be a NESCO geopark? And even as a, uh, an, a, 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 an applicant, we have access through this process to marketing for the region all over, uh, all over the world. So um, we're, that's exciting and we're looking forward to that. All four municipalities in North Simcoe have been a part of what's known as the uh, Community Safety and Wellbeing Planning Exercise, mandated by the province, coordinated by the county. Uh, the county uh, was wise enough to realize that there would be a significant draw on their resources, so they contracted out uh, to uh, an individual to craft plans for five areas that are based on how the areas are serviced by police. Uh, this area, you know, there's three, again, three pillars that we're looking at. One is, um, uh, sorry, uh, I should say that it's based on, if you look at the plans based on what would look like a bullseye, so a policy into uh, actual intervention by the criminal justice system. So the social development, prevention, risk intervention, and incident response. Um, the plan uh, is, will be presented to uh, council in the first week of June. And the pillars within the plan are uh, affordable housing for, for this area, affordable housing, education, mental health, and addictions. Um, we will, once it's presented to council, we'll start, we'll take it out uh, to the public, uh, at least middle will, because at that point you're starting to do individual actions in concert with the, uh, with the OPP. We're proposing to work with the BIA chamber and OPP to uh, implement environmental uh, design changes for prevention of crime in the downtown area and throughout the community. Uh, we're looking for uh, to implement a, uh, a network of uh, a database that will allow the OPP to know where camera systems are available if they uh, need to do an investigation throughout the neighborhood. That's a program started, I believe, in Halton called SCRAM. And again, we're, we're going to expand the uh, fact we have expanded the uh, CMART program, which is basically uh, a, a clinician riding with a, an officer. We now have two teams, uh, seven day a week coverage. They will divert people from the criminal justice system to the mental health system where you're going to see better outcomes, more appropriate outcomes. So that's another area where we're working, um, of course, with street outreach as well, continue that. Uh, 
aspect of uh, community safety and well-being. Attainable housing is a big one for us, um, both from a uh, economic development perspective and just from a purely from a needs perspective. A report was presented to council in um, on uh, this past uh, week, past Wednesday, week ago today in which we identified, we've identified that there are 1,400 residences within the town that are, have a core housing need, which means they're either too expensive, uh, they're not up to, uh, they need repair, or uh, they're too small for the number of occupants in the home. So we've identified, the committee's identified several strategies to attract and send industry to build attainable housing and it's uh, directed at those who can sustain payments but may not have first first and last for rent or a down payment. These are individuals who are typically working in the service sector, uh, your retail sector, hotels, restaurants, that sort of thing. There's where the economic development piece comes in because we've seen in other places where if you don't provide a level of housing that's a, a, attainable for these folks, they move. Blue Mountain's a classic example of that. People are moving out of the area, they can't find people to run their businesses because there's a lack of housing. So while it's not a, a lower tier or a municipal um, mandate, it really belongs with the county, we are working with the county uh, on a number of initiatives and uh, we appreciate county's uh, support with uh, an application for the rapid housing initiative. Uh, we're looking at some private and public uh, funds for, to perhaps uh, expand tradi transitional housing. And we may have a partner uh, to put up uh, we're in final negotiations with a partner to look at about uh, uh, 50 or so uh, affordable housing units. Stay tuned on that one. And uh, finally, I think we're going to, I know we're going to continue to, in the process of reinventing town hall. Uh, council and staff will continue to use technology training and continuous improvement to uh, maintain and increase service levels. And you'll see some efforts in that regard changes as you walk in the west entrance of town hall all the people who are public facing are at looking at town hall uh, looking at are at that west end and dealing with the public uh, we'll strengthen the organization's resiliency by realigning positions and reorganization uh, including uh, restructure improving span of control or supervisory control and uh, training for succession and finally i would say that midland is part of the four municipalities in north simcoe looking at a service review in areas uh, including engineering, legal, HR purchasing. And we're looking forward to the results of that, working with our neighbors to, uh, to implement the, uh, the outcomes from that study. So those are the, sort of the five areas that I see us working on. I hope I haven't gone on too long. I'm not watching my time here. Uh, no, no, that's I, th I think I think that uh, the interesting part of this is that we're all working together um, in terms of improving efficiencies and service in life. Really would like to thank uh, Mayor Walker and uh, Mayor Cornell and of course Mayor LaRue for, uh, for the opportunity to do that. I think together we're stronger. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Strathern. Um, exciting times ahead. And I can tell you from a Chamber of Commerce perspective and the businesses on King Street, we are really looking forward to the spring um, and the landscaping still to be done on King Street. And it looks so beautiful right now and the stonework um, it's, it's spectacular. So we're, we're very much looking forward to, uh, to the spring. Um, yes. So thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, so we'll move along with our next uh, speaker and Mayor Ted Walker of the Township of Tay, if I can ask you to, uh, to go ahead. Thank you. Certainly, good morning. Uh, and thank you to uh, Southern Georgian Bay Chamber of Commerce uh, for hosting this virtual town hall and inviting the local mayors uh, to speak about the year ahead. Um, as we all know, 2020 was um, an unprecedented year. And of course, we keep in mind um, those who have lost loved ones and uh, thank our dedicated frontline workers for their commitment to all of the residents of North Simcoe. It's hard to believe that the global uh, pandemic is still ongoing. Uh, we know that our residents, businesses and community members are struggling with the uncertainty of the year ahead. And I'm grateful to be able to speak about Tay's uh, Township's top priorities for the year 2021. 
Uh, starting with improved customer service, the delivery of exemplary service is a key priority of council and our senior management. One of the best ways to know if uh, community members are satisfied with their interactions with the municipality is uh, simply to ask them. That is why we'll be uh, conducting satisfaction surveys of telephone and in-person uh, services. Uh, the phone system in our municipal office has been upgraded and we will soon be implementing the survey. So community members can expect to be asked at the end of their call uh, if they were satisfied with the service they received. Uh, the answers will be tracked along with the date, time and who they talked to. And then this information will be tallied and used to help us improve customer service. Modernization of service is our next priority for 2021. And if uh, COVID-19 taught us anything, it's that we need to be able to react and adapt quickly uh, for our residents. It also highlighted the importance of modernizing our online services. We have online registration available for things such as booking our community center, our recreational programs, as well as fire permits. This year, we are looking to uh, launch our online resident service request portal. Uh, and this portal will provide an immediate increase in service levels for our community members and will better support community members that may be hesitant to attend the office once uh, we reopen. Service delivery is another top priority for, for TAY this year. Back in uh, early 2020, we were successful in receiving provincial funding. And um, that went to uh, review services uh, provided by each of our municipalities. Uh, Mayor Strathern referred to this earlier. And the goal is to determine specific and actionable recommendations for cost savings and improved uh, efficiencies. And uh, each of us ho hosted a town hall that provided an overview of the service delivery review engagement and allowed participants to ask questions, provide feedback on current services and to offer their ideas uh, on the future. This review is being conducted by Optimus SBR Inc. who are working on drafting an interim report uh, on the service delivery level review findings and we'll present the final report, presentation and closeout in late February, early March. We are focused on delivering improvements and identifying more efficient and effective ways of operating, partnering with our neighbors, sharing processes and collaborating on joint initiatives. Something very exciting and uh, positive to look forward to. We've heard our residents uh, and understand that education and communication of municipal services is an area of much needed support. And accordingly is another top priority for this year. With the new staff structure, a communication specialist was hired in November of 2020. And many improvements have been identified for implementation this year, and some have already been executed. Uh, I encourage our residents to watch a recently produced information video about Tay Area Drinking Water Facility Phase 2 upgrades. Um, you just have to go to uh, tay.ca slash water to watch the video and get, an informed, and get informed about this new process. We've also undertaken several resident surveys in the past year giving residents the opportunity to provide input and their preferences, excuse me, concerning the strategic plan, short-term rentals and outdoor burning. The more we hear from the community, the better equipped we will be uh, to get the information out in an entertaining and informative and easy to access and shareable format. Closing out the top priorities for TAY in 2021 is something we 
work on each and every year, and that is ensuring that the township is a place where we can live, work, and play. The global pandemic resulted in many of our recreational programs being canceled or postponed starting in the spring of last year. Uh, we've looked ahead and are finding ways to accommodate programming with COVID-19 protocols, most recently applying for an Ontario Trillium Foundation Resilient Communities Fund grant. And this grant would uh, provide funding to help the township deliver modified summer 2021 day tap camp programs and meets the COVID-19 guidelines uh, set out by public health and also the province of Ontario. We of course uh, welcome development and businesses, both large and small, as our municipality continues to grow. And in closing, I look uh, ahead to 2021 with uh, optimism and the confidence that our staff and council will be there to pave the path for our community members, businesses and stakeholders to succeed, grow and thrive in Tay. Uh, and I must echo Stuart's um, uh, comment about the uh, four local municipalities and particularly the four mayors. Um, the um, cooperation uh, has been spectacular. It, I think it helped us all through the COVID as we shared ideas and processes and uh, various items like that. And we meet uh, regularly and have since we were first elected. Uh, so we can share ideas and uh, try to come up with uh, solutions that will help all of us. So uh, once again, thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mayor Walker. Lots going on in uh, the township of Tay as well, it seems. And I totally like to would like to echo that we are stronger together. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is really honored to represent the four regions, each which is very distinct, uh, which just adds variety and interest to uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the different members that we have. Um, so uh, our third presenter is uh, Mayor Cornell from, of course, the township of Tiny, one of the most beautiful areas. Um, and we're always showcasing your uh, sunsets, which are really incomparable. So thank you for, <laughs> thank you for those sunsets. Uh, Mayor Cornell, please uh, go ahead. Great, well, thank you very much, Kathy, and good morning to you and good morning to your viewers and, uh, and to my fellow mayors. And sorry that uh, Mayor, Stra or Mayor uh, LaRue wasn't able to join us this morning, at, uh, but obviously, uh, as an important family emergency he needs to attend to. So, and thank you for those kind comments about Tiny. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've been here since what, 2003, and I would uh, very much agree. It is uh, it is a beautiful community, much like North Simcoe is. And maybe I'll just uh, at the beginning here echo the comments that you've heard from my fellow mayors here that uh, we really do work very well together. We, uh, I think we all individually and collectively have a passion for the area and, uh, and do our best to uh, support each other support our businesses, support the economy uh, as we continue to work together. And I think Mayor Walker is bang on that we, as best we can, share our best practices and make sure that uh, each of us understand uh, understands what each other is doing and how we can support each other as we go forward as a North Simcoe community. So with that, um, again, thank you to the Chamber for uh, hosting our virtual meeting today and uh, really glad that I was able to participate. Good morning, bonjour Annie. I'm um, going to talk to you a little bit about some of the priorities in the township, uh, as usual, being the third in line. Uh, there may be a little bit of overlap here, but again, I think that reflects perhaps uh, that uh, we are on the same, uh, same page on many things. Um, first, I want to just give a quick update with regards to COVID-19. Um, obviously, uh, a significant impact on us and, and our businesses in terms of the municipal governance in our communities. Um, in Tiny, our council and staff quickly adapted to the various stages of the pandemic and with a focus on lessening the impact on our residents in terms of our service delivery. Back on March of 2020, we did declare a state of an emergency and that helped us to um, respond a little quicker and gave us access to uh, um, authorities that uh, we didn't have to go through council with so that we were able to respond a little quicker and be more uh, uh, more mobile in terms of our response. The appropriate health and safety protocols were implemented for the safety of our residents, our staff, and our council. 
We uh, went virtual with our council and advisory committees. So we, we kept them going, but we had to change the format and the protocols. And we also uh, were able to amend our protocols to ensure that we had public engagement and participation, which is uh, one of the number one priorities and has been uh, for our township. How best can we engage the public and get their input as we review and discuss things and deliberate. And also with regards to our uh, recreation program, as uh, Mayor Walker mentioned, certainly uh, a number of elements of our recreation were impacted, but we were able to pivot and provide virtual opportunities wherever possible. And that uh, was extremely well received by the community. So we're very pleased with that. And council is very proud of how staff and our residents have continually adjusted to the, the new normal under the COVID-19 pandemic. And under the recommendations of the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit and the provincial directives, council has ensured that essential services along with parks, trails and green spaces remained open to the public whenever possible. And part of that was to support the mental and physical health of our residents. Um, obviously the disease itself was a huge impact, but here we are 11 months into varying levels of quarantine or isolation and that's taken a toll on everyone in terms of mental and, uh, and physical health. So we wanted to try and support that as best we could. We continue to monitor the situation and we'll respond accordingly, but it is encouraging. There is a light at the end of the tunnel as vaccines have arrived. Um, there are issues, but um, as uh, Mayor Strathern had mentioned, uh, right now the, uh, the residents and staff at long-term care facilities are a top priority and really pleased to say that in the county operated facilities, over half of our staff and over 90% of the residents have been vaccinated. So that's very encouraging and just a reminder that we are all in this together and, and working together and supporting each other, we will get through it. Um, one of our priorities certainly is the North Simcoe Service Delivery Review. You've heard uh, both the other mayors mention it. So ourselves, along with Penetang, Machine, Midland and Tay, we partnered in a North Simcoe Service Delivery Review. Uh, we were successful in receiving some provincial funding to support this project. And just reiterate a little bit, it's uh, the goal of the four municipalities to in investigate service delivery improvements and to identify more efficient and effective ways of operating. Uh, addressing these opportunities will allow the four municipalities while maintaining our individual identities, if you will, will be able to focus on how we can improve current delivery standards. So in mid-December, as was mentioned, there were virtual town halls and they provided an overview of the project and they certainly allowed for participants to ask questions, provide feedback on current services and most importantly, offer ideas going forward in terms of what we might do differently. Uh, as uh, Mayor Strathern mentioned, there's a number of services that are being reviewed that includes our human services, information technology, legal services, land use planning, emergency services, and fleet management. So there's a wide breadth of services that we provide to the communities that uh, are being reviewed. And again, the, uh, the opportunity is to uh, identify efficiencies and how we can be more effective and the uh, consultants report, the plan is to bring that forward to each council by March 1st of this year. And then uh, each council will have an opportunity to look at that and, and choose what we feel will be uh, the most effective uh, ways to move forward. Uh, another significant priority for us, and, and certainly in North Simcoe, but uh, tiny uh, through our residents feedback and input and uh, as a council, very concerned about broadband the reliability, the accessibility and high-speed broadband uh, within the township. Uh, we've been advocating for improved broadband services to better serve our residents and our businesses and our community and it's been ongoing. And certainly COVID-19 and the onset of physical distancing has, has only highlighted the importance and the, the need for reliable, affordable broadband services. Um, so we uh, continue to, uh, to fight for that. We're really pleased. There was an announcement made uh, in December that the Township of Tiny will benefit from the recently announced countywide $41 million investment in broadband infrastructure and services. And this is through an organization called the Southwestern Integrated Fiber Technology Network or SWIFT. It's part of the uh, Western Wardens Caucus, which the County of Simcoe is part of. It's a partnership with the federal, provincial, municipal governments and the internet service providers. So Tiny will receive an investment of about $13.1 million. This is a project that Bell Canada was successful in to provide fiber to the home. Uh, it'll cover nearly 5,000 homes in the township of Tiny. 
project is scheduled to be completed by the summer of 2022. And that will bring service to over 75% of the homes that were deemed unserved in the township as we identified through a, uh, a North Simcoe broadband gap analysis, re analysis report that was done in 2017. And just further in support of that, Council has established an ad hoc uh, broadband committee. And the focus of that is to continue to look at broadband opportunities, whereas the real cost in terms of continuing and the expansion of broadband within the township and look at potential funding opportunities and partnerships that uh, can be explored to again, make stable and affordable high-speed internet a reality. Um, something others haven't mentioned, but it's, um, it's a priority. It's uh, also a normal part of business, and that's our 2021 budget. We uh, presented our budget to council back in December. We've had a second look at it in January of this year, and we'll be looking at it again in uh, February the 3rd. And our intent at that time would be to finalize it. We've had some good discussions. Just some of the key priorities, the township, um, like other municipalities, are developing a long-term strategy for our infrastructure management, infrastructure debt, um, asset management is a key challenge for municipalities. So we'll be working on that. Uh, a couple of the major areas of infrastructure that we'll be doing in 2021 is with regards to our roads. We're planning 16 kilometers of resurfacing. We have bridges in the municipality, uh, particularly along our tiny trail. So we've got a plan to uh, make some significant improvements there. And I'll speak a little bit more about that when we talk about active transportation. We also uh, will be taking a look at, given the changing weather patterns, and in particular here with the changing water levels along Georgian Bay, looking at our flood mapping and how better to uh, adapt our planning tools to manage that and prevent uh, damage and impact uh, on residents and businesses that are located in the township going forward. Um, and then obviously there's uh, other pieces of infrastructure or facilities and that we'll take a look at. Another key initiative we'll have this year through our budget process is uh, we'll be undertaking a transportation master plan. And that'll focus on how we improve our connectivity and travel times, increase safety, and encourage active transportation. So it's a multi, multi-modal plan that'll access, address existing and future vehicular, bicycle, pedestrian, transit, off-road vehicles, ATVs and snowmobile mobility. So uh, an all encompassing uh, look at our transportation systems within the township and will help us look at uh, our designs and our policies as we move forward uh, with our transportation infrastructure. And finally, our uh, fifth priority we've identified is our trails and I touched on it, active transportation. Tiny has recognized the importance of healthy, active living for its residents. And we've adopted a trails and active transportation plan as far back as 2009. We, had a, uh, we have a committee of council that uh, was appointed at the time and they manage that uh, implementation of that plan. And most recently, uh, we've seen multi-use signage for bikes and pedestrian uses being dedicated along Champlain Road. And that's to connect and encourage active transportation from the Penetanguishing waterfront to the more northern areas of the township. Uh, path has also been allocated south of the Wyville soccer pitches, and that'll connect the tiny trail to the soccer fields, uh, again, providing an active transportation corridor from the soccer fields to the school, a subdivision in the village of Wyville. In addition, multi-use lanes have now, com have now been completed to link the rail trail to uh, Tiny Beaches Road South. And uh, certainly Tiny continues its efforts to promote active transportation. And, and this whole area will be integrated into our uh, transportation master plan. So that uh, kind of touches on our uh, major priorities for the year coming up. Uh, and uh, again, just want to thank the chamber and, and something I've been using, I want to remind everybody the, the three W's just to uh, watch your distance, wear a mask and wash our hands. So uh, thank you. And I too just want to echo the comments that, uh, you know, working together as the four municipalities uh, is, uh, is really to the benefit of all the residents and businesses uh, here in North Simcoe. And just glad that uh, the four of us uh, do have that kind of a relationship and as Mayor Walker said, I think it's now we're every two weeks, we're on a call uh, discussing the business and, and sharing ideas and, uh, and challenges as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Cornell. Um, it really is great to hear how uh, the municipalities are working together. Uh, maybe something that we don't hear about all the time. So it's, it's really wonderful how North Simcoe has come together and uh, is stronger. 
um, together. So, all right. So if it's okay um, with our mayors, we'll move into the uh, Q&A, the question um, and answer period. So we did have questions pre-submitted by uh, our members, as well as a, a couple from the community at large. Um, so these questions will go out to all the mayors if they would like to answer. Um, and uh, we'll see how we, we get through them here. So the first question, uh, perhaps we'll uh, head first to Mayor Walker. Um, one of our members, the SS Kiwatin, we all know is, is going through some challenges these days. So the question um, that was asked regarding the SS Kiwatin, are all four municipalities on board with keeping the ship in Port McNichol? And if so, what are the towns doing to petition for this to happen? So perhaps uh, Mayor Walker, you could, you could start that conversation. Sure, thank you. Um, I think everyone in the area would like, like the key to stay uh, in Port McNichol. Um, and we're hopeful that, uh, that it can remain in Tate Township. Um, you know, we understand and uh, recognize the historical significance of the ship and the attachment that many area residents have to it, uh, um, you know, with uh, people that, uh, relatives that used to work on it. Uh, in my case, my mother was a waitress on it and my brother was a bellhop. So uh, certainly our family has some... Uh, attachments to it, uh, or those that simply and watched, uh, enjoyed going down and watching it uh, leave and come back from its uh, trips, weekly trips to Thunder Bay. Um, also, we have to acknowledge uh, and appreciate the passion uh, the friends of Key Watton have for the ship and uh, the enormous amount of work uh, they have done over the years to um, uh, bring it into a condition that people can tour it and actually conducting tours. And each year, each time you went back uh, each year, there were more improvements. So uh, they did a, a spectacular job. Um, we've been receiving regular updates from the friends of Key Wanton and also uh, uh, Dan Travers group, uh, trying to have the Key Wanton stay in Port McNichol. Um, and uh, in fact, Dan is uh, making a, a delegation to our council meeting tonight. So uh, we have been providing, um, uh, keeping on top uh, we've been, uh, I had a, a phone conversation uh, earlier this week with, uh, with the president of um, Skyline Developments. And um, in the end, um, the ship is owned by, by Skyline Developments. Um, and ultimately, they will be the ones making the decision as to um, to where if it stays or if it uh, leaves. There were some rumors of it going to Kingston, um, and there are a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, hurdles to overcome uh, to be able to have it in a with a group that uh, qualifies for some of the federal uh, uh, and provincial uh, financial support initiatives. Um, so, uh, we hope it stays and, um, we continue to keep our communications open with both, uh, Skyline, uh, the friends of Key Wanton and, uh, and Mr. Travers and his group. Thank you, Mayor Walker. Um, and there certainly is a, a passionate group uh, of people, uh, driving that campaign. So, um, we are, we are definitely behind it, of course, as the Chamber of Commerce and the in, importance in the tourism industry uh, to keep it here. Would uh, Mayor Strathern or Mayor Cornell like to respond, Mayor Strathern? Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't have much to add to what Mayor Walker said. Uh, I too, I remember as a, a kid being out in a rowboat and watching both ships uh, heading up or coming back from the lakehead and uh, it was uh, fond memories of that. Uh, it was great to see it come back and all the boats that were out on the water to welcome it back into for its home, Port McNichol. And I emphasize that it's home, Port McNichol. And I, uh, I, I appreciate the uh, outpouring of support for the Keywatt to stay in, uh, in, the, in Port McNichol. Um, I think that as, as, a, as a municipality, we'll take our lead from, uh, from uh, Tay um, and support Tay 
and the residents of the area in, in any way that we can to to keep uh, to keep the vessel here. Um, I, I do agree with Mayor Walker that it is an asset that belongs ultimately to uh, to uh, the developer. And uh, however, I, I think that uh, with, we may be able to exert some pressure. I know the county has tried uh, uh, an attempt to set up a, a situation where it would stay here and we'll, I think, continue to try to uh, make that a reality, that it stays where it belongs in its home in Port Reno. Thank you, Mayor Strathern. Mayor Cornell, was there anything you wanted to add? Sure, um, not, I'm not sure really anything I can add. I, I personally don't have the history that my uh, fellow two mayors do here, but I, I certainly recognize and I've had the opportunity to tour the ship a couple of times and recognize that um, it's a valuable tourism asset uh, in our community. Um, but like uh, Mayor Strathern, um, you know, I will look to uh, Mayor Walker and the Township of Tay in terms of their lead and uh, the Township of Tiny will be there to support in any way that we can. Uh, to Mayor Strathern's point, Township of Tay has reached out to the County of Simcoe to see uh, there was some thought that we might be able to do something through our museum at the county. Unfortunately, that didn't uh, pan out, but uh, certainly if there is something that uh, we can help with or support, uh, would certainly be willing to take a look at that as well. Um, it's a challenge, but as Mayor Walker said, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, depending on how your perspective, uh, the ownership of the vessel is, is not within the municipality. So it does create some challenges with respect to uh, ultimately what uh, happens here. Thank you, Mayor Cornell. And on to our next question, I think which can go out to, to any three of the mayors. Um, the provincial and federal governments have provided grants and subsidies for COVID relief. Are there any plans for municipal grants or pandemic relief uh, for our businesses within North Simcoe? So maybe uh, we'll reverse the order here and uh, start with Mayor Cornell. Sure. Um... Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the province and the, the federal governments have uh, brought out some significant uh, programs, uh, which include grants and sub subsidies for our businesses. It's a challenge at the municipal level, I'll be honest, uh, in, from a financial point of view and a fiscal responsibility point of view to provide grants and subsidies. And that's why we actually look to the province and the federal governments. What we have been able to do, certainly in Tiny, and I know our, our neighboring municipalities as well, to help businesses and our residents. We've extended uh, the payment terms. We've uh, extended due dates for uh, many of the payments, taxes, those sorts of things. We've waived fees and penalties with respect to those payments. And we'll continue to do that uh, through the pandemic and uh, would, to the extent that we need to and for as long as we need to, to help the recovery. Because we understand what's happened there. We uh, but as I say, from a uh, specifically from a grant and a subsidy point of view, it's uh, it's very difficult at the local level to uh, to fund those kinds of things, and that is uh, the responsibility of the provincial and the federal governments. Thank you, Mark, Mayor Cornell, Mayor Strathern. Um, I would uh, echo many of the comments of Mayor Cornell. Um, the Municipal Act, uh, Section 106, is very specific in terms of what municipalities can do. Section 107 then allows for a bit of wiggle room there, but it's not significant when you consider that municipalities uh, are looking at, at just an infrastructure deficit that if you, uh, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario projected, I think it was either eight years of a 10% increase in taxes each year or 10 years of 8%. Either way, a lot of money just to deal with the, the deficit. When you consider that municipalities only receive nine cents of every dollar tax. It's based and it's based on a property assessment. Municipalities don't have a lot of room for direct incentive other than the ones that uh, Mayor Cornell mentioned. We do have the opportunity though to as we've been doing, work together through the Cultural Alliance to promote cultural activities and grow those activities. Uh, we also are working through EDCNS, uh, sorry, the Economic Development Corporation in North Simcoe, another joint venture, which in turn is uh, um, um, uh, promoting a significant element is tourism. Uh, we can basically provide a physical space like the downtown uh, rejuvenation and a, a policy space that 
that uh, encourages and, and helps businesses to develop. But from a financial perspective, we have neither the expertise nor, nor really the wiggle room to do those sorts of things. So we're doing work where we can. Uh, we're very conscious of uh, the uh, business community and the vacant storefronts in some cases, the downtown. Um, tax, some of the, uh, the tax incentives that the Mayor Cornell mentioned. Uh, we've also done, I say all four municipalities have virtually done virtually the same thing in that regard. So um, I think our best uh, long suit is to, uh, as I say, the physical space and the, the working together. County is a, a very strong advocate for business uh, through the economic uh, development group there, doing a fabulous job. And uh, we'll do what we can as, uh, and we'll adapt uh, on the fly, but I can't see direct financial incentives. Uh, we can help people understand how to access the federal and provincial incentives that are there. And, in fact, the Chamber's done a great job of doing that, as has the BIA and EDCNS, North Simple Community Futures, and the county. So uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Mayor Strathern. Mayor Walker? Uh, thank you. Um, again, I, I'd have to echo the, the comments of both Mayor Strathern and Mayor Cornell, and maybe it's a reflection of the fact that we do get together quite often to discuss uh, areas of... Uh, challenges and concerns. And we're certainly aware of the struggles that uh, our businesses and small businesses are having. Um, we were quite proud this year though, in Tate Township, uh, we had three new businesses start up, uh, even in the, in the situation with the COVID. So that was, that was great. And they, they seem to be doing okay. Um, one of the main problems we have uh, was uh, referred to by Mayor Strathern, and that is the what I, what I refer to as the bonusing provisions of the Municipal Act that uh, put restrictions on municipalities uh, with respect to that type of um, assistance. Um, so it's best left uh, to the purview, uh, purview of the provincial and federal uh, governments. Um, both of these are better equipped and funded to make um, such an in initiative successful. Um, and we have done, like the other municipalities, uh, extension of uh, due dates and waiving of late penalty charges and things like that. Um, uh, again, in 2021, as we did, uh, as we did in 2020. And um, again, a, a way that we we approach these things on a joint basis. Uh, um, uh, Mayor Strathern and and Mayor Cornell both referred to the cultural alliance that uh, we're all members of and help fund and also the uh, EDCNS uh, organization. So uh, we're making uh, whatever efforts we can through, uh, through the um, payment, late payment charges and any other um, initiatives that we can come up with that we're actually legally able to, to offer. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mayor Walker. Um, and I know our businesses are very grateful for what the municipal municipalities have been able to do in terms of uh, relief and waiving fees and that type of thing. So it is very much appreciated. Um, and as for new businesses in the township of Tay, I have to mention uh, Rooted, which is a plant-based uh, business which opened during the pandemic. So it really is amazing to see businesses open even during these kinds of circumstances. If anybody's interested, that is a strictly a plant-based restaurant and it is, it's doing very well. So it's, it's yeah. great to see. And on to our next question. Um, we talked a little bit about the tourism industry, this question uh, directly related. So how important is the tourism industry in our region and what can be done to improve awareness and visibility of North Simcoe and ultimately increase tourism visitation and expenditures? So it's kind of a big, a big question there. Um, maybe we'll go back to uh, Mayor Walker if, if you could uh, respond to that. Sure. Uh, tourism, of course, is, um, is very important uh, to the, in, all of North Simcoe. Um, and in fact, uh, is one of Tay's um, key industries. Um, we, we are proudly the home of Martyr Shrine, uh, St. Marie and Y Marsh, who uh, jointly um, 
are responsible for bringing thousands of tourists uh, and visitors to our area each year. And um, over the coming year, the township will continue working with DBCNS um, and their Heart of Georgian Bay uh, component to further enhance promotion of Tay Township and area destinations. And as mentioned in my opening remarks, uh, we're working on uh, significant uh, areas in our communication uh, development uh, to be able to provide uh, um, assistance to the businesses from an inquiry standpoint. And we've had some very brief discussions um, in that regard as to how we can better uh, service our, uh, promote tourism and uh, bring the people here and try to keep them here as long as we can. Thank you very much, Mayor Walker. Uh, Mayor Strathern? Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, um, but I've heard them at county a number of times and they're in the multi-billions of dollars, uh, the impact of tourism in, in, in the county. And, and uh, of course, in, uh, in North Simcoe, uh, given the marinas and the attractions that we have here and cottage country, right on the doorstep of cottage country, a lot of people going through. Um, I think that um, I know that Midland is uh, and the other municipalities supporting tourism through Goji Bay, which is part of the um, part of the uh, EDCNS uh, organization. Uh, you see their brochures out, speak, uh, pointing out the various attractions, whether it's uh, the attractions themselves or the amenities that are available to people once in the area, hotel, these, and so on. Uh, the county's done a fabulous job. I keep going back to county, but I, I have to say they've done a fabulous job through the economic development group in terms of through the COVID uh, event to point out to people ways that they can enjoy sort of a staycation within within the area rather than you know you can't go to uh, to Aruba for the winter, but you could sure go to uh, out to tiny beaches and uh, or or up towards Owenda Park or over to the uh, St. Marie and uh, et cetera. Um, I think the, the other thing that uh, for Midland particularly, uh, we're looking at how to promote the uh, cruise ship industry. We are fairly certain we have one and we think maybe two new cruise, ship, cruise lines coming into Midland. One of them would use Midland as a terminus that has spill on effects in terms of how that might impact the airport hotel business uh, because it's a terminus uh, they they're looking at what the hotel capacity is in the area and support and, and doing that and I think one that's a, sort of a bit of a sleeper at the moment and we've just funded it uh, is uh, this notion of being a UNESCO geopark and that is uh, it's it, it, it's not what you think of in the traditional sense of a park it actually celebrates the geology and geomorphology geography of the area and how it contributed to the culture, the industry, just the fabric of the society within the area. So the purpose of this project basically is to map out what might, what we would need to do, what our strengths are in going for uh, a geopark status. And as I said earlier, in doing that, we start to network with all the, the, the UNESCO sites that are involved in that program. I think there's over a hundred of them globally. And so we can start to market uh, the area and its features uh, to and attractions to uh, a global audience through that, just through that process. So those are just a few of the things. Uh, and, and of course, supporting the activities of the, of the chamber and the, the BIA in terms of uh, they too promoting uh, their, their particular offerings and in, in, to a broader audience. Thank you, Mayor Strathern and Mayor Cornell. Oh, thank you. Um, I think it, it, it kind of brings us back to what we talked about, I think, at the very beginning in terms of the area that we live in and what it has to offer. Uh, it is such a special area. Georgian Bay, obviously, trails, beaches, et cetera. And back to uh, EDCNS, which is the, the economic voice of the four municipalities. And within EDCNS, you've got a, a significant focus on tourism through the heart of Georgian Bay. And they, uh, the promotion that they put together and Stuart's touch on that um, in terms of helping to 
helping folks outside the area recognize what we do have here and the quality of life that we have here to attract folks. The cultural alliance similarly is built on that in terms of uh, beyond sort of the, the hard assets that we have from a tourism point of view, the culture, the, the crafts, the, the skills, the tradespeople that are out there that um, make our areas as unique as it is. And for example, in Tiny, and I think that's part of it, that each of our communities has uh, different elements that we can promote. We recognized our agricultural sector and within that agritourism. And what we did a couple of years ago, we started doing virtual crawl, farm crawls and we had buses and, and it was just amazing the response. So it was an opportunity to educate people about um, agriculture and what happens on a farm and give our farmers an opportunity to to uh, talk to uh, visitors and then uh, at the end of the day, give the visitors an opportunity to purchase product from the farmers. And it uh, went over extremely well. And we were fortunate enough last year, we were able to pivot that whole thing and go virtual. And we similarly had success. So we've been out to a number of different farms uh, throughout the township and have seen uh, a significant, as I say, uh, response from the public. And we'll look to continue to do that. And it's it's always nice and to see that as a municipality, when we developed our strategic plan, that was something that we had identified. And now that uh, we've been able to um, bring that to the, the front of our priorities and develop that and see the response. So um, I think as you've heard all of us say that um, collaboration, working with all the partners here in North Simcoe, um, we definitely recognize the value of tourism and how important it is and, and certainly partnering with the county and with the province. RTO7 is our regional tourism uh, section. So uh, I know there's a lot of good conversation and a lot of support and, and a lot of funding too that uh, comes forward to help us. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Cornell. And uh, again, just to reiterate uh, the Township of Tiny and your beautiful region and the farms, the amazing farms that are, are there, uh, the Potential for agritourism, I think, is is huge. Uh, we have Windley Farms, the maple syrup. They're mm -hmm. very passionate about what they do um, in terms of, you know, the production and wanting to educate people on uh, how maple syrup is produced. And a new member is the Farm to Door um, right. store, which represents now, I think, about 75 of the local farmers. And it's kind of one-stop shopping for local produce. So lots of opportunity, I think, there uh, moving forward. And considering our time, I think we have uh, one, one quick question left, if, if that's okay. Um, and here it is. So for the downtown cores, particularly in Midland and Penetanguishene is the question, and the vacant storefronts, how can municipalities provide incentives for new businesses to start up in our region? So maybe we'll go to Mayor Strathern, if you could start uh, start that question. That's uh, that's an interesting question because uh, it, it harks back to some of the things we talked about earlier, which uh, you know along the lines of bonusing and so on. I think the way that Midland and I think the other municipalities have chosen to deal with this, uh, I'll cite Midland, uh, I'll speak for Midland, uh, is a physical space. Midland has invested about fourteen million dollars some help from the province, et cetera, to change, to make the main street a place where uh, people will come and want to, you know, meet, meet with people they haven't seen in a while. Um, uh, just a physical space that's conducive to pedestrian, being pedestrian friendly, putting on events in the downtown. But with respect to particular incentives, I think uh, the one thing that we would do is uh, I believe the province has allowed for for the uh, it used to be that if you had an empty space you had a tax uh, the your tax was reduced that created a, a sometimes an incentive for people to keep empty storefronts they, for whatever reason for tax purposes or whatever uh, the province has removed that ability I think and I'll look to the other mayors to see whether I'm blowing smoke here or it's reality but I think it's a reality. And so we would look to implement, the, we're now given the ability to, to not provide those incentives for to, to maintain an empty storefront. Um, we do events in the downtown. We try to make sure like the Butter Tart Festival, that's a downtown based, a very successful Dug Fest, which is anchored in the waterfront, which, uh, and there are lots of uh, other events that through our, our uh, special events group, and also through the uh, uh, the uh, 
cultural alliance are supporting the downtown. So rather than direct incentives, which really, it's really discouraged in the Municipal Act. I mean, they get uh, pretty persnickety about these things, um, even though they're well-intentioned. So I think the best way is just to promote, to provide a space and events that draw people into the downtown. That creates demand. Uh, people then see an opportunity and then jump to, uh, to participate in the opportunity either through as uh, just people join the event or as a merchant. So I, I, outside of that, I don't know. I would look to so inputs also perhaps from the chamber and EDCNS to council and to the municipality in terms of how we might help, but I don't see direct municipal incentives personally. Thank you. Thank you again, Mayor Strather. Um, and we'll go to Mayor Cornell now. Okay, thank you. Just quickly add to that. I, I think one thing that we could do, and I think you'll see it come out of the service delivery review that we can do a better job of uh, um, what standardizing the, the, the procedures, the red tape, uh, trying to minimize some of the red tape that's required for the permitting, the siting for new businesses to, uh, to facilitate uh, them setting up shops. So that's the, the one thing that I would add to uh, Mayor Strathern's comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, lastly, Mayor Walker. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, uh, Stuart has some very good, uh, very good responses and some of the challenges that, that we face um, uh, in Tay's case and somewhat similar in Tiny, I suppose uh, we don't have a single core. We've actually in, in Tay's case have four, uh, four cores that we, we have to, uh, to look at. And I think, um, you know, promoting shop local for residents and um, whatever events um, that we can promote in each of those areas to help out um, is, uh, is the way to go. And uh, I should add that um, we will be looking uh, this year at a community improvement program uh, to support uh, downtown core businesses uh, and what they might look like in 2022 uh, or 2021 for possible implementation, implementation in 2022. And one of the programs that we've had very brief discussions on is a program which uh, ran in Penetang Machine, and I, I'm not sure if it's still running, and that was the Facade Improvement Program. So, uh, so those are some things that, uh, that we're looking for. Thank you, Mayor Walker. Okay, it, it's 11 o'clock, so I think this concludes our town hall. Um, on behalf of uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Directors, and myself, um, we, we're honored to have you as our guest today. Thank you so much for taking the time um, to, uh, to present and to chat with us. It's uh, been great uh, learning from you and also hearing how the municipalities are working together. So this has been recorded and we will be sending it out to our full membership of 400 businesses throughout. Nor Simcoe will also be sharing it via social media. So I'm sure we'll have lots of, of viewers. Uh, we, we look forward to working with you um, to brighter days ahead in 2021. Um, and we really do hope that there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel very soon. So stay well and thank you very much, Mayors, for, um, for doing this for us. And we look forward to speaking with you soon. Stay very, very well. You too, thank you. Thank you, you too, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much and, and you as well. Stay safe, stay well, take care. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. <clears throat>